woman sitting in an armchair painted by Henri Matisse was found in 2012 and has since been returned to its rightful owners, the heirs of Paul Rosenberg. Since the German government kept the art trove a secret for a year, the Rosenbergs did not see their painting for 74 years. The Henri Matisse painting, Woman Sitting in an Armchair, that was once owned by the art dealer Paul Rosenberg was considered lost, but was found you know, 70 years later in an apartment in Munich. Who was the owner of the apartment and how did they have the 1921 Matisse painting? The owner was none other than Cornelius Gerlitt, the son of the Nazi art dealer Hildebrand Gerlitt. The artwork was then confiscated in 2012. Before getting into the details of the discovery of Gerlitz's paintings hidden away in his apartment and information about his father, let's go back to the very beginning to first learn about the painting and its provenance in order to lead up to the most recent events of the painting's life. The Woman Sitting in an Armchair is an oil painting by Henri Matisse painted in 1921. Henri Matisse was born in La Cateau Cambresis, France on December 31st, 1869. During World War II, he visited Paris when the Nazis invaded France, but made his way back to Nice. His son, who was living in New York, begged him to leave, fearing that if he didn't leave then, then he would not get another chance. From 1940 to 1944, the Nazis occupied France and attacked the degenerate art. The paintings were in possession by the French art collector and dealer Paul Rosenberg. Rosenberg was one of the world's major dealers of modern art, representing Pablo Picasso, Georges Braque, and Henri Matisse. When he heard about the approaching war, Rosenberg moved as much artwork as he could in order to protect it before he left. Rosenberg and his family were Jewish and had to leave Nazi-occupied France. The report from the Gerlitz Provenance Research Task Force through the German Lost Art Foundation gives a detailed report of the provenance of the Matisse painting. According to the document, the woman sitting in an armchair was looted from Paul Rosenberg in Le Bourn on September 5, 1941. The painting had been inventoried by the ERR among a group of artworks known as UMB or Unknown Works, all of which had become disassociated from their source collections in the process of looting and storage by Nazi authorities. The Matisse was inventoried as UMB 353, and on July 24, 1942, the Matisse was found to have gone through ERR exchange number 21 through Kurt von Baer with art dealer Gustav Rochelle. The painting had resurfaced in 1953 when it became in possession of Hildebrand Gerlitz, then passed down to Cornelius Gerlitz, Hildebrand's son. It is unknown where the painting was between the years of 1942 and 1953, but it was discovered in Gerlitz's Munich apartment in 2012, along with at least 1,200 more of Nazi looted artwork. This hidden artwork now known as the Gerlitz Art Trove. The Gerlitz Art Trove is estimated to be valued at approximately $1.3 billion. The Gerlitz Art Trove was discovered after Cornelius Gerlitz was caught traveling from Germany to Switzerland with suitcases filled with cash and works on paper. Many of the works discovered here have not had their provenance clear. And without a clear provenance, many museums will not display them. The Gerlitz Art Trove began when Hildebrand Gerlitz, in his official capacity through the German Nazis, was able to buy art that was considered degenerate and had been removed from German museums, along with personal family belongings. In his official capacity, he was authorized to buy the art in exchange for getting masters for Hitler's Führer Museum in Linz. Hildebrand Gerlitz worked for the Nazi party during World War II, but even after working for them, he was able to play the part of a victim of the Nazis and cleared his name. In 1945, after clearing his name, he claimed that his art collection had been destroyed in a fire. This cover-up included false affidavits, coded exchanges with dealers after the war. Cornelius Gerlitz did not leave behind any heirs, instead leaving his art collection to several different institutions, including museums in Germany and Switzerland. According to a Bavarian law, if there was no contract, a court will be appointed to decide who, if anyone, could inherit Mr. Gerlitz's property. The question that first comes to mind with the statement that over 1,200 looted paintings by artists such as Picasso and Matisse were found tucked away in an 81-year-old man's apartment is how did he even attain that much artwork? Gerlitz inherited them through his father, Gildebrand Hurlitt. Hildebrand Hurlitt was one of Hitler's art dealers for degenerate art during World War II. 
The Reich Minister of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, appointed Hildebrand, despite his Jewish heritage, to the four-person commission for the exploitation of degenerate art. It was the commissioner's job to sell the degenerate art abroad, which could be used to acquire masters for the Führer Museum in Linz, Austria. Hildebrand could buy degenerate works himself, an opportunity that he took full advantage of. Berlitt used this position to his benefit and started expanding his personal collections. One may think, is this legal for him to keep all of these paintings? Well, if they were acquired legally, as in they were not taken, he would be allowed to keep them. However, many of the works in the Gorilla Art Trove collection were thought to have belonged to Jewish collectors and families who were forced to sell their collections below their market value in an attempt to flee Germany and the Nazis. This begs the question of, were these methods really legal or were they falsified to attempt to create the illusion that what they were doing was legal? Cornelius Gerlitt died in May of 2014, but the legality of the situation still remains. Germany has no law that mandates the return of any work deemed to be Nazi looted. If the art can be proven to have been legally acquired, then the owner is not required to return them. It was stated after the discovery of the trove that the search and seizure of the artworks was not included in the warrant they had to search the apartment. The statute to claim the artwork is 30 years, and Gorilla has been in possession of them for more than 40 years. This resulted in a conflict of who should possess the paintings. Should they be returned to Rosenberg's heirs, or was the law enabling Gorilla to keep all of the artworks? Another conflicting piece of evidence was Gorilla's will, which claimed that once he died, all of the artwork in his possession should go to Kunstmuseum Bern in Switzerland. Gerlitt also made a deal with the government that any looted art should be returned to its rightful owners. The Rosenberg's lawyer, Christopher A. Marinello, is a lawyer who specializes in tracking down stolen art and was in a New York hotel room when he got a call from his client, Mrs. Rosenberg. She claimed that one of her family's paintings was in a collection that had recently been discovered. Once she found out, she told Marinello, that is our painting, go get it. Marinello, along with Cornelius Gerlitt, his legal representatives, and the German state began negotiations for the rightful return of the painting. After a year and a half of negotiations, the painting was returned to Paul Rosenberg's heirs on May 15th of 2015. This is the end result of what consisted of Mr. Marinello looking through approximately 250,000 documents, which included letters and pictures and calling countless authorities. After many recent discoveries of missing and looted artwork, Germany has invested a lot of money into the Providence research and has allowed for the restitution of 12,000 objects, but this may not be enough. Museums and private collectors cannot be forced to look into the provenance of their artwork. With this being the case, many museums will not participate, contributing to the missing artworks. The Rosenbergs are an exception to this rule. However, there should be laws that protect the families of the missing artwork. This includes researching the provenance, and once the provenance has been established, returning the artworks to the families. In failing to return the artworks, it protects the Nazis and their horrible actions. It causes families to lose part of their identity and their culture. If we can do anything to prevent this from happening, we should strive to accomplish it.